if you've ever been assigned a CBT in the military and you went on Quizlet to get all the answers and you shared everything on a SharePoint, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. The comment section is very similar to Mad Max. And in many ways, I feel like a less imposing a Morton Joe. Get in there, find out why everyone goes into the comment section. There are some constructive comments, just not a whole lot. So, all right, in there. If you are looking to support the channel, multiple ways to do that. We have Gun Mag Warehouse. They give us monetary support and then we buy magazines from them to thank them for being cool. Except for Daniel, tell him he sucks. Just kidding. We also make videos for them. If you're looking for ammunition, LAX ammo and plaid and outwear and all that kind of stuff, do Vertex 25% off with Grantham. Gentlemen, ladies, everything else. We today are going to be talking about the JP Enterprises uh, rifles. So these definitely differ from the typical rifle that I review, which is typically a military or duty type rifle. Uh, this is definitely in every way a competition rifle. This is the SCR-11, which is a side charging model. So we're gonna talk about this, why I decided to do it, and uh, kind of go from there. So to start off, as far as my relationship with the company, um, like many others, I'm familiar, like, familiar with JP Enterprises. I knew of them from the competition world. However, I had never shot them. So when I was at NRA show this year, I was walking by the JP booth, and like I made eye con contact with the guy, but it was kind of awkward, so I looked away, and I started walking away. The guy like chased me down. He's like, Grantham. And I was like, what? And he's like, hey, we want to work with you. I'm like, why? And he's like, because I think it'd be cool. Just run the dog piss out of our stuff. And I respect that. I respect when companies just want to hear what I think about things. So I was like, yeah, send me some stuff. So I've actually been lying to you guys for the last like year. Um, well, not year, for the last like, you know, year and a half. So for the last like six months, so I've actually been lying. So I've actually been lying to you guys for like the last six months. I've been um, running a JP Enterprises uh, variable mass bolt carrier system and silent captured spring system in my Mark 18. I've done like 10,000 rounds of suppressed on it and it's been A-OK. -okay. So with all of that, they're like, okay, we want to send you like a complete rifle though. We want you to try it out. And I was like, I, I don't really do competition stuff. And he's like, please. I was like, no. And he was like, I promise if it makes you a better shooter, then I'll buy you dinner. And if it doesn't make you a better shooter, then like, you know, I'll buy you something really expensive. I'm like, well, I'm just gonna shoot slow then. He's like, crap. But anyhow, so they sent me the rifle and uh, along with a bunch of ammo to shoot through it. So I've done 5,000 rounds on this particular rifle and um, holy crap. Um, just, you know, straight up overview at the beginning here, without a doubt, to date, um, you know, as of, you know, March of 2018, this is the fastest, um, smoothest and flattest shooting AR-15 that I have ever handled um, to date. And I'm sure that might change as technology increases and stuff, but as it stands, there is nothing as pleasurable as shooting this thing. So we're gonna talk about what makes it so good. You know, the AR-15 is a really interesting platform on what you can do with it. So let's get into it. This is using a 14.5 barrel. So this was kind of configured for me a little bit, but you can you know, kind of get whatever you want on it. So they're running a 14.5 barrel. We are running 416R stainless steel, um, which is a phenomenal barrel steel. This barrel is cryogenically treated in order to get it fit into everything. I'm not precisely sure how it works because it's some dark magic that's done by uh, dwarves and all that type of stuff. But um, what's good about that, the way that they install it, is that it gives you phenomenal accuracy. So I'm typically running with good match ammo, and if I'm really trying to have a good optic, like a you know night force, I'm running around 0.5 MOA at 100, which is stupid accurate. And honestly, I think the barrel might be more accurate than that. It's just I'm not like a phenomenal long range shooter or just a phenomenal shooter in general. I'm okay. So I think that the barrel is far better than me. The barrel also has an adjustable gas block, so you can specifically adjust the amount of gas coming back into the system as per the different type of ammo that you're using. That way you can adjust that recoil cycle so that it's you know, on that razor edge of reliability and you know just enough gas to get the thing running. Or you could also overgas it a little bit if you want this thing just to chug through a bunch of you know dirt and that type of stuff. So the adjustable gas block is very well designed. It's very easy to adjust. Um, mine has been set for Winchester M193 55 grain, and it's been phenomenal. I can easily, easily push this rifle out to 700 uh, meters, no problem with 5.56. So 
pretty impressive for a rifle. Now the muzzle brake, when I first saw it, I was like, ah, oh, crap, this is the I don't want any friends muzzle device and everyone's going to hate me. It looks like a muzzle brake on like a 50. And I was like, come on, guys, that's a little out of control. This is a 5.56. I typically don't run brakes on my Air 15s. I like muzzle devices that minimize flash signature and put the recoil directly back into my you know, shoulder. Air 15s are pretty light recoiling. So when I saw the brake, I was like, come on, because I've seen some brakes where they actually overcompensate, where every time you fire the gun, it's actually pushing the gun down, or it's being too aggressive, and it's actually making the gun dance more than if I just had more control over it with like a bare muzzle even. So when I saw that, I was like, come on. But they have really done their homework. You know, you can really understand why these rifles are used so much in the competition world, because everything is so precisely done um, and engineered. Like these... <laughs> You can see why competition shooters win with these all the time. The brake is just perfect. When I'm shooting this, the brake literally just keeps the gun from moving. It just, nothing happens. And it's really, it's kind of creepy almost. Like you shoot the gun and you're like, did something happen? Like I felt, I heard muzzle blast, but nothing really happened. So it's weird, but they did a great job with it. And my camera guy, who is just always just getting crushed when companies send me muzzle brakes, was like, this one actually isn't that bad, which is surprising. So. It must be the way they did it, but it's very well done. Of course, you can't mount a suppressor or anything to this, but this isn't meant to be a duty slash tactical rifle. It's meant for competition. And when it comes to that, this thing crushes. So good on them for that. Now, moving up from the from all of that, we do also have a thermal dissipator going around the barrel. It's kind of hard to see in here, but it's these fins that are attached to the barrel completely encompassing it for the majority of it going up to the gas block. So why do we have that? Well, what it does is it increases the surface area of the barrel by 700%. This does two things. As barrels get hot, your accuracy typically decreases. So this keeps the barrel cooler. What this means is that it can do longer strings of fire and stay accurate compared to, uh, let's say, a BCM with a cold hammer forged barrel, which are really nice, but they're just gonna cool off more slowly. So as I'm doing longer and longer shots uh, in shorter time periods, uh, you know, that barrel's gonna be heating up and I'm gonna be losing accuracy compared to the JP where it just is going to cool much more quickly. Of course, that does add weight up front. And again, this isn't a duty rifle. So when it comes to competition, you know, you're going through and you're shredding on a course and you get to that long shot, you throw over your lever and you go to take that long shot, that, bar that barrel is gonna be sufficiently cool to make sure that you're gonna be accurate. So I'm actually, I've actually really liked it. It's been really awesome. Another side kind of effect of that is that because it cools so much more efficiently, I don't get that heat mirage coming off the barrel nearly as fast as I would with a different rifle. You know, my BCM, I get that heat mirage as I'm shooting, you know, over a couple minutes long range, you know, putting maybe, you know, 20 or 30 rounds uh, per minute out there. With this, I don't get that. That means I can keep that accuracy because when I get that heat mirage, that begins to distort my view through my optic, which makes it harder to make those long shots. So that those thermal fins are just awesome. I thought they were like a gimmick. I'm like, this is stupid. Why do I need these? But now that I've used them, I've been like, okay, way to go, JP. You, you proved me wrong. Moving from the thermal fins to the handguard. The handguard, you know, when I first saw it, I was like, no, do not like. I like my BCM MCMR and there is nothing better, but it's grown on me. So this is a very minimalistic handguard that's designed just, you know, for competition use. So you don't need a whole lot of things mounted. Now you can mount Picatinny like you have right here, just to show you that you can. You have a top rail if you need it. But honestly, I'm gonna end up pulling off all these rails and just using it because this round hand guard just fits your hand very well and it has this really nice precise texturing that isn't overly aggressive, but it gives you that just that little bit of traction to really dig into it a little bit. So I've been really impressed with that. I really like this front end setup. It is just perfect for me for shooting and you know pulling the trigger on this I can see why this is a winning rifle. So way to go to them when it comes to this setup. Just phenomenal. Okay moving back from there um, we have our upper and our lower receiver. So first off I am running the lightweight uh, bolt carrier group. So what that means is when I'm firing, I have less weight traveling back and forth, and that of course makes for a lighter recoil impulse. Now along with that, I have perhaps one of the best innovations in the AR-15 world, and that is a silent captured spring system. I don't know what dark magic they performed on this or who they, what they did or who they sacrificed, but the silent captured spring system is amazing. It 
reduces recoil so much that it feels like cheating. Even with my Mark 18, when I had it install, installed on that, it was phenomenal how much it changed the recoil and pulse. It literally, I know everyone says this, but it feels like I'm firing a 1022, uh, where it, it, the bolt just cycles, but nothing happens. It's insane, and you can totally hear the difference. It sounds way different when it's cycling right up against your cheek and it's conducting into your ears. And it is just such a pleasurable experience to shoot this gun. I just can't describe enough how awesome these two systems are together. Now, if you're running suppressed, um, you know, on a duty rifle, probably run the variable mass bolt carrier system in case, you know, you need to slow down the bolt a little bit more. But on a competition rifle, this is the perfect setup right here. Now, moving over from that, let's talk about a couple things I don't like right here. So, this is the first thing I don't like, and I actually talked a lot with JP about this. This is the side charging handle right here. So, my problem with the side charger is that one manual of arms for me, right? With an Air 15, I'm used to um, you know pulling back in the back. But my main problem is leverage. Uh, the Air 15 was designed to be pulled straight back, right? So kind of putting this kind of off kilter pressure on it with the side charger just doesn't feel quite as smooth as it does to have the rear charging handle. Now, with all of that being said, I consider myself a fair reviewer. So the reason why they did this is in the competition world someone is taking all their shots and they're firing, 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 bang, 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 right? They get to a target, they go to fire, and they get a click, right? So they fire, click, and instead of having to, you know, pull their cheek back and pull back in that charging handle, which is what you typically do, you can keep looking through the optic and you can just rack the side charging handle, rack that dead round out and just keep shooting. So it's all about speed, right? So those milliseconds saved by just racking the charging handle and not bringing my cheek, cheek off can mean the difference between a win and a loss in the competition world, which is why they did that. So I do understand why, I just don't prefer it uh, personally. Moving down from there, um, the bolt release kind of feels a little bit like an afterthought to me. Um, it's the same size, it's kind of recessed, it's right behind this giant side charging handle. It's a little bit harder to actuate, and God forbid you ever try to hit it with this uh, slide uh, the side charger back, it's gonna get your thumb like it did with me the first time because I'm stupid. Um, safety is okay. It's a 90 degree throw. I'm actually not very impressed with the safety. I think they could have done better by running something from Radian or something like that. Um, and my biggest problem with it is that it's the same size on both sides. So when I go to go to fire, it typically scrapes across my hand and slows myself down when I'm getting into a firing position. So this is something that I would that would likely change in the future on this particular rifle. Magazine release is fine. The magazine well is beveled for easy insertion, which is super important. And the trigger. So, the trigger. When I got this rifle, I was like, I'm not going to like it. It's going to suck. I, I hate it already. And especially when I got to the trigger, I'm like, there's this little bar around the entire thing. It's round and it spins. It rolls. And I was like, what kind of bullcrap millennial fidget spinner piece of crap is this? Like, what the hell? Come on, JP. I was like, all right, let's give this a, a, you know, a chance. And it has to date been the most phenomenal trigger that I've ever fired. So let me explain myself here. So with this trigger, what's happening is when you press into a trigger, of course, your finger can't just go straight back, right? It kind of has to roll it kind of has to move down your finger because it has a distance it has to travel. So with this trigger, because it moves under your fingertip, oh my God, it feels great. It, um, it rolls with your trigger, with your finger, it allows your finger to press directly to the rear, which makes that trigger pull that much easier. Not to mention, this trigger is phenomenal. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna ghost the trigger together. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make some pottery. So we're gonna ghost it. You're gonna put your little finger right there. I'm gonna put my finger over yours, put it to fire. Okay, there's no take up. I feel that little rolling motion. That is maybe 3.5 pounds, maybe, maybe. It's just a very crisp, God, that feels good. Okay, pull it to the rear, and it just rolls. It's not a lot, but it gives just enough so you can get that straight rearward pull, and it makes sending those long shots so much easier. It is single stage. Okay, let's talk about the reset. Reset is how far forward I have to let that trigger go before I can then pull that trigger again and make it fire again. So, letting it forward. I let off maybe a pound and a half, two pounds, and it resets. I'm pulling it again. That is the most phenomenal trigger uh, that I have used to date on AR any AR-15. Now, is it full powered, any of that stuff? I don't know. I need to do a lot more testing on this trigger 
before I can find out if it's like good to go for all that kind of stuff. But all my initial impressions say that this is the most, the best feeling trigger I've ever had. How's it gonna hold up in hard conditions? We'll find out. We're gonna be doing some more testing here in the future. Okay. The grip, um, I prefer a more steep grip, so I'm not as uh, much a fan of that, but can, that is easily, you know, I can easily change that out, so no big deal there. Stock is fine. I'm not a huge fan of the Magpul stocks, but they're great, and it works perfectly well in this situation. Okay, so we've talked all about all the features on this rifle, what makes it amazing. What does it feel like to shoot? The combination of the muzzle brake, of the silent captured spring system of the lightweight um, bolt carrier group of the trigger that rolls with your finger as you pull it um, you know the thermal dissipation from the barrel ensuring that your uh, your shots are accurate this is the best fastest rifle i've ever shot i am consistently nailing 0.09 to 0.10 split times that means between shots i'm firing a string of shots at close range or something like that I'm, I'm shredding on this thing. I did a build drill in under a second with this thing. Build drill being, um, well, there are many variations, but 10 yards, six rounds, A zone. Uh, just no problem under a second with this bad boy. It's, there's nothing faster right now. With a good guysy trigger on a BCM, I'm typically running, you know, 0.11 to 0.13 splits, 0.12 very comfortably with a mil spec between 0.14 to 0.16 about. So 0.09 to 0.10 is phenomenally fast. That is such a huge increase, especially when you're getting down to those really fast times. And it's just, there's just nothing like it. This is in every way the king of the Gucci rifles. It's not made for duty, it is made for competition, but if you are a competition shooter, or not even a competition shooter, if you just wanna just shred like crazy, there's nothing like this rifle. Yeah. It, here's the problem. It does cost a lot, right? It is very expensive. They're costing between three and four thousand. So I understand that's going to keep most people from buying it. But if you're in the market for something for competition use or something like that, this is definitely the rifle for you. Now, if you don't want to spend that much on an entire rifle, I'm going to be doing an entire video on the silent capture spring system and their variable mass bolt carrier system and all that kind of stuff. And also I'm gonna be working with them on designing a duty rifle using many of these components and I'm gonna be beating the living shit out of it for like, you know, probably 10,000 rounds before I'll say anything. So we're gonna be doing a lot more things with JP, but to start off with, their competition rifles are no doubt among the best. And so going over into the competition to, you know, uh, your competition to tactical crossover world and Jeffrey Gerwich has done a lot of great articles about that but we'll be exploring that a lot more with JP but without a doubt guys a phenomenal rifle expensive but just phenomenal don't bankrupt yourself because again as cool as this rifle is and as amazing as it is um, it's not going to matter if you're not training right if you don't have training if you don't know how to shoot you're still going to suck with it so when i filmed with this rifle um, we shot with like probably another six ars there and this is by far the favorite among everybody there this thing is just amazing and there was some um, less experienced shooters and some more experienced shooters there and among the less experienced shooters they couldn't run it as fast as those of us who had been shooting for a while and the reason for that was of course that we have that experience and that training so make sure you get that training, otherwise you're not gonna look good with this. Lots of great places to get training. You have Bear Solutions, Cogworks, Haley Strategic, who is definitely not my dad who abandoned me, Esoteric, Darcy, Tony Cowden. These guys have this sum of experience that is amazing. And they are just out there waiting to impart that knowledge to you. And it's important that we get that because there's a lot of really good lessons that we can learn. And nobody is, I mean, you're your own greatest critic, but at the same time, it's hard to be objective with yourself. So get out there, get training. Gentlemen, thank you so much for watching, and I've got nothing else for you. Okay, last thing I'm gonna talk about, which is reloading. So I've had a lot of people ask me if reloading is worth it. So let's talk about this really quickly. A lot of people will say, hey, if I reload 223, I can reload between, let's just say a number, like 15 cents a round or something like that. I know guys can reload ammunition for very cheap or something like that. They say, so it makes a lot of sense for me to reload because I'm saving half on every round that I'm firing. So what's never taken into account from people who I've talked to about reloading in mass is the amount of time that it takes. 
so is the time that it takes to reload worth the the amount that you're saving? I guess. So let's say you're uh, you know you're like an underwater welder and you're making X Y Z per hour. Do those hours that you're reloading equal you know how much you could save if you were actually working those extra hours to buy the ammunition? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that reloading is bad because reloading is very therapeutic. Also, when you reload, you can tune ammunition specifically to your gun, and that is really cool because you can get some amazing accuracy. But if you're reloading simply to save money, make sure that you put all the factors together, not just the amount that you're saving. Gentlemen, thank you for watching. If you've gotten this far, you know what we're going to talk about. That's Big Daddy Unlimited. It's like Costco, but for guns. Is it worth it? I don't know. Subscribe, and it will be worth it if you spend money on things. If you don't, then obviously you're just burning money. Some great deals out there. Sometimes you'll find better deals elsewhere. But as a whole, the best deals on any one site in any one area. If you've gotten this far, you're my ultra fans. I want you to comment with your favorite military, U.S. military firearm throughout the entirety of its history ever. Take care. Get in those comments.